Welcome to SoundBridge Music's Featured Artist Interview. In this series, we get to know Front Range artists who not only shaped the local music scene, but who joined with SoundBridge Music and its mission to use the power of music to improve the lives of individuals and bring communities together. We're so happy to be here today with John Bunsley, the SoundBridge Music Featured Artist of the Month for March. John is an award-winning songwriter and a talented guitarist. He just released a new studio album called Four, which is available everywhere, and will be having a big CD release show on March 30th at Gross and Bart Brewery. So we are here with Mr. John Bunsey, who's a fantastic songwriter oh, from you. Loveland. Indeed. Where are you originally from? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> so I was born in the Bahamas, in Nassau. Ooh. And um, the first 18 years of my life, I never lived in one place for more than two years at a time. Mm -hmm. And so I lived in uh, uh, Ohio and New Hampshire and North Carolina and Spain and Mexico. And I, I think that might be it. Wow. <laughs> that sounds like quite a life. Yeah, so I moved around a, a ton as a kid, and then I moved to Colorado when I was 18. Okay. And I've been here for an undisclosed number of years, but quite a few. <laughs> and uh, so Colorado's kind of home now. Nice. For in, sure. In those years of rambling around, um, one, when did you get into music? And two, how did all those different moves and locations uh, influence you musically? Have you done this before? That's a good question, man. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I've done it a couple times, but not that many times. Okay. Well, you're, you're, you're good at it. You have a natural. That's a great question. Um, so I'm leaving that in. My mom, I think, I think even in Spain, I think we always had a piano in the house. Mm -hmm. And my mom played piano. She was not um, fancy or anything like that, but she had song books and she played... Mm -hmm. you know stuff and um and my dad was really into music but not as a musician at all just as a listener mm -hmm. and he had what was back in the day called a hi-fi 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 stands for high fidelity okay <laughs> my dad's old <laughs> my dad's an old dude man anyway the hi-fi was like the uh, the bee's knees of music reproduction at that at that time, you know, mm -hmm. and it was just like I mean it was like a stereo with separate speakers and a turntable and everything, but but it was referred to as a hi-fi, yeah. and my dad had a hi-fi and he had an extensive collection of records and I I don't know when I started listening to his records, but I just remember listening to them and I would do stuff like it's weird I'm weird I'm a weird dude <laughs> <laughs> I would do stuff like wait till nobody else was in the house. Uh -huh. and then pick records out and play them. And I would just sit, and this is weird because it's a habit which has stuck with me my whole life. I would sit exactly dead stereo center, equidistant from the two speakers, and I would just sit there and let the music yeah. wash over me as a kid, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and what's funny is that uh, as an adult, whenever I move into a new place, the first thing I do is determine where the stereo is gonna go, make sure there's a chair that is dead stereo center, <laughs> And sit down and listen to a record to get inspired to, to unpack the rest of the boxes. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, yeah. when, did, uh, when did you start writing your own stuff? Well, I wrote my first song when I was, uh, um, I think, 16, 15 or 16. Okay. It's kind of a funny Pretty story. Good, wasn't it? It's kind of a funny story. <laughs> it's, not a great, it's not a great song. But it did, it did get used in a movie. It was, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a film that was made called Free Boulder. Uh -huh. And it was kind of a, a, it was a documentary and it was kind of a tongue in cheek uh, documentary about how politically correct Boulder is and, you know, our anti smoking laws. And this was a few years ago. And uh, the title of this old tune is You Gotta Be Free. Ooh. And it was used in the soundtrack to that film. Wow. <laughs> but here's what happened. So, That's amazing. me and my buddy um, were just gallivanting through the woods in New Hampshire. Uh, and somehow we had acquired a six pack of uh, Miller High Life beer, mm -hmm. not Miller Genuine Draft. Miller, Miller High Life—that's the better the champagne one, right? of beers. Man. And um, 
we might have been we might have been doing something else too. Uh, but anyway, what I know for sure is that we ended up in a treehouse. We found a treehouse in the woods, with like a little you know ladder up to it. And we climbed uh -huh. up it, and we were up there with our guitars and our our Miller High Lifes, and a cop found us. I don't know how this all happened, but a cop 16. found us, and it was a New Hampshire police officer, and he was um, to be polite. Uh, he hadn't seen the inside of a gym in a long, long time. <laughs> he was a portly, portly fellow. And what are you kids doing up there? Oh, nothing. You're drinking up there, aren't you? Oh, no, officer. No, we're not drinking. Get down here right now. No, we're just going to stay up here, officer. <laughs> and he couldn't climb up and get us. He was too big to <laughs> climb up. So we just sat up there and we waited till he left and we finished the Miller High Life and then we wrote a song called You Gotta Be Free, man. A rebellious song about, oh you know, gosh. about the man trying to keep you down and stuff like that. <laughs> so that was my first song. That's amazing. Man, and now here we are. It's 2019. Oh my goodness. And you have, you are, the big thing that's happened now is you are about to put out your fourth? Fourth CD. Studio album. Yes. Tell us about this album. I am very excited about this new record. Um, this is, I call it the little CD that could because uh, mm -hmm. I didn't think it was actually going to get made. Yeah. Um, and it took almost two years to do. And I still owe some people some money, but I'll eventually get it paid off. <laughs> and, Buy one of those uh, CDs now. And that's right. Help me, pay. Pay, help me pay all the wonderful people who helped me make <laughs> this CD. But what happened was I... Um, I tried to do a, a, a fundraising campaign to make the record a Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. And apparently I'm just not as clever and funny as, as, as I think I am. And for whatever reason, my campaign was a bust. And you don't get any money unless it funds to the full value. And it did not fund to the full value. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had scheduled for my friend and uh, co-producer to come out and do the first round of recordings. And he shows up, and I had no money. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing about it now. So I took out a credit card, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, paid for the commitments that I had already made, mm -hmm. and then assumed that I would not be able to finish the record. And along the way, what has happened is really wonderful, amazing people, and Tom Prasada Rao, my co-producer, being the primary one, just kept pushing me, just kept pushing me and saying, we got to make this record, we got to make this record, we got to find a way to make this record. Mm -hmm. Some people worked for free, some people uh, were willing to defer fees. Uh, everybody just kind of got together and said, no, John, you have to make this record. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really excited about this record. In my mind, it, it, it um, represents a definite uh, improvement in pretty much every possible metric that you could measure it by from any record that I've made before. Mm -hmm. And I guess I feel like if I can say that, then things are going well. Yeah. yeah. Then the production all around is really beautiful. The strings Thank you, sir. and all the acoustic guitars sound so good and there's so many just it's a really beautiful sound of record. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh tell us about the uh the songs. Where did some of the songs come from? Are there any themes that you see throughout? Or any particular songs you want to yeah. talk about? So most people think of me as a sort of a jovial, outgoing, positive kind of person. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know that from, from reading my lyrics. <laughs> um, I tend to write dark stuff. I tend mm -hmm. to write... Here's the, way, here's the way it comes to me, the way I think about it is. I write songs about real people in real situations. And as we all know, everybody struggles. Mm -hmm. And we, we have this culture, you know, Facebook, you go on Facebook and, and, and if you believe what you see on Facebook, everybody you know is having a perfect life. Mm -hmm. They're on a perfect vacation in a perfect spot with a perfect room that has a perfect view and look at that perfect margarita that's coming in on the tray, mm -hmm. you know? And people don't, usually go on Facebook and go, wow, things aren't really working so good. Yeah. You know, and we, we have this this culture where you're supposed to be happy all the time and you're supposed to be driving your nice car and be happy about it. And the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot of unhappiness that happens in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of the fabric of life. It's not it's not something you can get rid of as much as we might try to. Mm -hmm. This is my personal theory. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to agree with it. And so I tend to write about 
people who are struggling, mm -hmm. who, who are working through things. Um, you know, people who, you know, tried to rob a house and, and got shot and killed instead, you know. Well, that's a pretty big struggle. But, uh, yeah, so I, I, that's what I think I kind of write about it. Well, let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit and let's talk about this community whole thing. Yes. Um, tell us what inspired you to get uh, become involved with Soundbridge music. As I move through life, more and more I see myself as a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I teach instruments. I teach people how to play guitar and ukulele and stuff like that. But I also find that um, I'm perhaps one of the, I think the way that you say it is, more experienced people amongst the community of musicians that I move oh. in. Yeah. And, and sometimes that experience can be helpful to some of the other musicians in a lot of different ways. And so I see becoming involved in an organiz organization like this as being an opportunity for me to to use those kinds of teaching skills and and um, and spread the joy of music in the world. Man, so you mentioned you teach, um, and you like you do so much in the music community in terms of you've got a Neil Young tribute band called Zuma. This is true. You play in different groups. You have bands. Um, you play guitar with me and uh, do so many different things. How has like playing in those groups and all and teaching and all the different experiences, how has that informed your music and this record in particular? Even though right now, I, back up for a second, I went through mm -hmm. a period in my musical life where I said yes to everything. Mm -hmm. Hey man, do you want to play this gig? Yes. Do you want to play guitar? Yes. Do you want to write a song together? Yes. You know, and I just, and that was good. Yeah. And I'm, start, I'm saying no a little bit more now. And mm -hmm. so I'm not doing quite as much of that. I'm not playing in quite as many things as I was before mm -hmm. um, because I was just sort of over committing. But I would say this. Um, every situation that I play in musically brings something different. Mm -hmm. And so the more different musical situations for me that I could put myself in, I think you grow and you broaden your horizons in a lot of different ways. Um, man, well, thanks so much for sitting down and chatting with us. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the folks, with your fans, with the world? Um, yeah, a couple of things. First of all, just in terms of the you know shameless self-promotion, mm -hmm. I want to mention one more time that my CD release show is coming up. My CD release show is coming up. It's on the 30th of March. From 7 to 9-ish p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, at the Gross and Bart Brewery in Longmont, Colorado. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be so fun. Yes. I've got like, I don't know, like a dozen people that are coming and playing instruments or singing with me on different songs. Yeah. You're doing both of those things. Yes. And there's going to be food, okay? We're gonna, I'm going to get some Turkey? pizza. My, my girlfriend, I don't even know what she's going to make. She's talking about making like all these crazy dips. <sighs> Cookies. Um, and I do want to say one other thing. I want to say uh, something to the musicians and the non-musicians in our community, whomever that is, whomever is watching this video. If you're a non-musician, please support the musicians in the community. Go to shows, buy CDs, even if you don't have a CD player. It's really not the point. The point is to help people in your community continue to make art to make the community a richer place. If you're a musician, I say to you, also, and this is hard, but also try to go to shows. I try to, I don't make that many. And also, don't hide in your basement. Don't shut yourself off. There is a vibrant music community in this area, and there's people that want to interact with you, that want to collaborate with you, that want to make music with you, that want to become your fans. So get out there, go to the open mics, go to the shows, go to the clubs and meet people. It'll be fun. Uh, thank you so much for your wisdom and for chatting with us and for making this beautiful music. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to catch John Bunsley's CD release show on March 30th at Gross and Bart Brewery in Longmont, Colorado at 7 p.m. If you're interested Hard in learning marble. more about Soundbridge music and becoming Cold, part of Music for hard. Change, Check us out Salad. at soundbridgemusic.org. No room to spare. Strong like a statue. It's gonna end up in the video. Secure and unyielding. <laughs> <laughs>
was lost. <laughs> That's probably gonna be Small. the way we close it. <laughs> I was scared. You see, I've been down this road for one time before.